Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going on a little field trip. A customer who we did an automower install for a few years back called and complained that he had a flashing blue light. Now if you don't own an automower you don't know what a flashing blue light means. It is when a wire that's buried underground is broken somewhere and you don't have a complete loop going around the boundary of your property. So the goal here is to find that break in the wire. You can see I'm moving wires around on the back of the charging pad and what I'm trying to do is come up with different combinations of loops in the wiring field to come up with a green light and narrow down where the problem might be. We're here. This loop all the way to G1 here is good. So if I go from G1 to G2, we can test that section. Let me explain this to you in a little different way. And make it a little easier for you to figure out maybe you can pinpoint your own wiring problems so what we have here is a typical install we have a house a garage a driveway a shed and a garden and all of the black lines on here represent buried wire for your automower install this is your charging pad and on the back of the pad you have an AR and an AL a G1 and a G2 you might have only a G1, you might have a G3. Doesn't matter for this demonstration. Uh, as long as you got one guide wire, you can narrow down your search for a broken wire. This perimeter coming out of AL and going all the way around the property and back to AR, you should get a green light. If you don't have a green light, that means there's a break in here somewhere, all right? Well, how do we find that break? So what we want to do to narrow down our search is break this whole install up into sections, all right? And we can easily do that. Let's unplug the wire from area left, and let's unplug the wire from G1. And now what we're going to do is we're going to plug that G1 wire in where we took off the terminal on area left. And what that did for us was create a smaller loop. It created a loop that looks like this. Okay? Because if you ran a wire just directly from here to here, like this, you'd get a green light. Okay? So, if we get a green light when we do this, that means all of these wires are good. And we're going to systematically go through here and move these t wires around on the terminals and figure out what section has our bad wire in it. So if you haven't figured it out yet, the key to this is drawing a map. And you can lay it out. It doesn't have to be a fancy map. Just something so you don't have to try and remember each connection. Alright, so we know that our G1 wire is good all the way to the perimeter okay we also know our area right wire is good all the way to where it meets it, the T at G1 so let's narrow it down even further we'll keep our terminal on the area right but now we're going to take the G2 wire and we're going to hook it to area left alright just like this now that we've done that, our loop looks like this. Around the garden. Around the shed. And back up. Oh, my bad. It doesn't go that way. Although we already know G1 is good because we just tested it. It goes this way. 
all right? So we know now if we get a green light that everything I have in the green is good. If we get a flashing blue light, that means something's broken in that area. But right now, we already know G G1 is good. We can finish this. So we know that wire is good and these wires are good. That just leaves this little section. So you can see how we easily narrowed that down to one area to look for. Now I'm not saying just because you know where it is that you're going to find the break just by walking it. But that's typically what I do. I narrow it down to a section. I might come along here and find out that somebody, you know, did some gardening here and punched a shovel in the ground or there's a rut in the driveway here where someone drove off the edge. I, I would look there first for broken wire. Maybe somebody changed the landscaping in front of the door here. Who knows? Maybe I find a hole where something was digging. There are a lot of possible obvious things going on. There's also this connector right here. So there's things you can look at without any specialized equipment to try and figure out your problem. It doesn't matter what combination you change these on the back here. The active terminals are the two outside ones. And if you have a connection, you're going to get a green light. Okay. So narrow it down any way you want to try and figure out where your brake might be. Let's go back to the video and we'll take a look at what I found on this job. So this is the tester that we're going to use. This video isn't about a brand of tester that's better than the next or whatever. This is just the one that I happen to bring to the job. So a lot of these work the same way. You make a connection to the wire you're trying to test and you make a connection in the ground right here. We're sticking a screwdriver in the ground and putting a clip on it. And what these testers do is uh, they beep and in between the beeps where you get a null, that's where your wire is. So listen to this here. So this unit's also got a gauge on it so you can look at the needle and kind of pinpoint where the wire is. You can see I can move along pretty fast with this as, as long as I keep walking at a decent pace and I keep getting the, the beeping and the null, I know I got a good connection in the wire there. Uh, some of the units that I've used in the past haven't quite worked this well. And I'm sure there's other ones that, that work much better. Watch the needle. My wire is right there. Okay, you saw there how the needle was moving uh, on each side of the wire. And I can pinpoint this pretty well. If you look, I'll mark this spot here where I think the wire is. And we'll remember where that spot is. We'll come back to that. But I got fooled right here. Now this has been repaired. We're on the edge of a garden here. This has been repaired a few times. I think that the homeowner is making the garden a little bit bigger every year. And I think I found my wire. But it wasn't in that original spot where I marked the X. And you'll see here in a minute that I just happened to stumble across that wire. which is dead. Well, how come I just had a beep a minute ago? Let's do a little bit more digging. We're just going to pull this staple out of the way. And sure enough, there's another wire. That's the wire that's actually live. So, I guess my point is if there's been work done on the install you know be careful that you don't get fooled I know we don't pull up old wire when we lay new wire we just trench right in alongside of it 
this has never been a problem as far as the functionality of the machine. This wire. All right, so I dug a hole right here. I found the wire, and I could feel that it was loose, so when I pulled it out, I got an end. So if we lay this wire here, we should be able to find another end. Right there. Now, if we put them two ends together, we might have a signal. So the lesson here was that if you find a spot that you think has uh, a break in it, and you dig it up and you find the wire, just tug on that wire a little bit. If you're within a few inches, or in this case, a couple feet of the break, uh, depending on how dense the soil is, you might feel that the wire isn't tight. Give that wire a little bit of a pull, and if it pulls out, comes loose, you can lay it right on top of the ground and trace back to where that break actually is. You'll then have to rebury that section of wire that you pulled out. I hate those pliers. Here I'm making a connection with some uh, 3M underground uh, um, connectors. They seem to work pretty good for us. You could solder wires together, you could use a butt connector and heat shrink. Alright, we just fixed our fourth break. Let's see if we're going to get a green light. AL on AL, AR on AR. Yes. So there you have it. We got a number of brakes repaired in this install. I hope that you picked up a few hints here as to how to diagnose your own auto mower install problems. Thanks for watching. Later.